This thing is a digital twin, and that means that it's a real-world object connected to a virtual object, and when I change one, the other one changes. I'm going to do a deep dive in this video, showing you the three parts of how you build a system like this, from the physical controller that you need to 3D print and build, through the electronics and Arduino board, to the laptop running Unity Game Engine with the virtual simulated object there. Um, we're going to be using a framework that I've developed called Powder of Life, so I'll be showing you the GitHub repo where you can download the files and build this whole thing. Let's dig in. So this is our physical artifact. It's kind of a weird input device, a little custom controller, yeah? Uh, on the back, you can see it's just a potentiometer, nice cheap part. Uh, I have another video where I show how to connect an XHP connector like this so you get a nice pluggable polarized connection. It's very sturdy. Uh, but the part we're looking at here is this lever arm. And now on the top of the potentiometer, it acts as a knob. It's screwed to the head of it there. And it's got, this is M3 hardware that this takes. This is a nut and bolt assembly here, this trap nut. Let's take this apart so you can see what's, what's going on here. So this just slides off. This is the part that you print. You download this file and print this. I've got three of them here. You could make more if you wanted to, they're modular. And on the other end is a slightly larger hole where you set the potentiometer in. So that's this other side here. If I unscrew the, the nut holding those together, then you can see here's our little potentiometer with the connector all set up. Uh, the ones that I tend to buy have a little stump here. This seems kind of common. So on the back side of this, there's a little hole for that. Hopefully that works for whatever you've got. As I said, you can probably do as many of these as you like, right? Because it is a modular design. But you want to dress the cables because ultimately you end up having this octopus back here. I use silicone ribbon cable because it's flexible and durable. And then I use Velcro when I want to make little attachments like that just to kind of keep everything together. Midway down the cable, I use these SM connectors because they allow you to click in and have a polarized connection that is um, good in line like this. Now if we follow this cable to the other end, we've got our breadboard with Arduino. It's plugged in, USB to the laptop, so make sure you have a good reliable USB cable. And for the breadboard, you can see I've got an Arduino Nano, and I've got my sensors, my knobs here, plugged in. So I've got two different sets of connectors for each input. I just do this because this makes a good general purpose breadboard for me. At least lately, this is what I'm, I'm really in love with. You can see I've used uh, hot glue here to secure these headers. These are just uh, little straight headers. And I hot glue those so they don't move around. And then the the these are connected over here to the Arduino's analog input. I'm using the first two analog inputs for the knob. And then uh, you need to balance those knobs between the ground and VCC. But depending on the kind of sensor I'm using, I'm find, I find that there's really just two setups I have to be ready for, and so I've got options here. Uh, I've either got ground, VCC, and then the output there. Or, and that would be for like a breakout board, for an infrared reflectance sensor or something like that. Uh, but for a knob like this, uh, more commonly you're going to have this ground outputs in the middle and then VCC on the right. So this top header here would be for the knobs. And if I'm attaching other kinds of devices, I'd use these second ones. So this is my, uh, again, kind of my generic setup for doing testing and building systems like this. Let's move on to the laptop and the software. That you need to install to get this thing working. This is the Powder of Life GitHub repo. Um, Powder of Life is a framework that I've been working on for the last seven years or so. It's a multi-environmental framework and that means that it well it covers a lot of territory and it's still a work in progress so please excuse any mess. <laughs> um, but we're going to be looking at the robotics mechanical folder for the 3D printable part. We're going to be looking at the Arduino folder to get the Arduino library and the Unity folder to get the Unity library. So let's start with the 3D printable part, the little lever arm that you need. I'm going to go into the robotics folder. I'm going to go into 3D parts. And currently this is just here at the top level, this potentiometer lever. So go ahead and download that and print it. And if you're watching this video later and this is moved around, you may have to dig, uh, but it should be in the robotics 
environment. Let's go back up to the top level, to the powder of life. Now we need to go grab that Arduino library. So we're going to go into the Arduino folder, and there's a powderoflife.zip. Be sure to download that. And then we're going to install that into a, the Arduino IDE. So once you've installed the Powder of Life library, like other libraries, uh, it comes with examples. So if you go to the file menu, down to examples, at the bottom, you may have to scroll, but at the bottom you should see Powder of Life, and it has its own uh, categories here. We're going to go into inter-environment networks because we're talking between Arduino and Unity. So uh, we're going to be looking at the analog sensor lerped serial output times two because our we have two little potentiometers there, and I wrote this uh, example essentially really just to support this uh, this exact thing. Uh, this will work out of the box if you upload this to your board. And it's going to create two different sensors, and then it's going to spit them out of the serial port so that Unity can get a hold of them. And again, I don't really have time to dig into the implications of all of this here, but this should allow you to plug in two uh, potentiometers. It's expecting that you're going to be using pins 0 and pins 1, the first two analog input pins. So you'll need to do that. And uh, when you use a device that communicates over serial like this, you do need to be aware that there's potential conflicts with the serial port. So uh, you cannot program this board if you have something else running that's using the serial port. So you'll need to potentially close other apps. You certainly have to close uh, down a session like the Unity app if it's communicating with something like that kind of thing. Uh, Kira for slicing 3D prints gets in the way of this all the time with me. So. Uh, you may need to have Arduino being the only kind of active app that's touching the serial port, so you can program your board. And then once you've programmed the board, you may need to close the Arduino IDE because it's using the serial port and doesn't always release it, uh, so that we can go over to Unity and uh, pick up that incoming signal that this Arduino board is spitting out down the serial port. So let's go back up to the top of the Powder of Life repo and get into the Unity folder. Here as well, we just have really one thing you need to download, this powderoflife.unity package. This is how Unity does uh, installs, library installs. Right. Within the Unity IDE, you can install a package by clicking in your um, asset view here. You can right click and you can import a package this way, custom package. Once you do that, you should have a powder of life folder. And if you go in there, it is not not the cleanest thing I've ever built, my apologies. But there's an example scenes folder, and there's quite a bit that you can play with in here to understand what the framework is meant to do. But for today, we're gonna to go into the serial communication folder to get our potentiometer lever digital twin scene. Uh, and when you load it, it should look like this. You should have the same 3D model you just printed, but it's loaded here in Unity and it's ready to be controlled with code. So let's, uh, I've got my, my controller plugged in. Let me fire up this sketch. Again, it will need access to the serial port, so be sure to check the console for errors. But if it's error free and if it's connected, it will, it will simply grab the first device that's plugged in. So today I've got a mic plugged in. I had to make sure to plug in my Arduino board first, so it's the first serial port, and then plug in my mic. Uh, it is possible to customize that, but for simplicity's sake, just make sure the Arduino board is the first thing you've plugged in, so it's the first serial port. And then this Unity sketch should be able to just grab a hold of it. And if it's working, if everything's working, you should see the object, uh, you should see this artifact move around when you move those potentiometers. You'll notice that it also comes with a disabled uh, game object, and that is a little physics sandbox. Feel free to turn that on and hit play if you want to do something just a little fun. You've got a, uh, a cube coming down a ramp, and you can manipulate that. Here it gives you a little, little simple game made with a weird customized controller, just to give you some idea of what you could start to do. Well, that about wraps it up. Please leave any questions you have in the comments. I'll be sure to put links in the description. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.